Joseph Mallard William Turner Ra was an English Romanticist landscape painter. Turner was considered a controversial figure in his day, but is now regarded as the artist who elevated landscape painting to an eminence rivaling history painting. Although renowned for his oil paintings, Turner is also one of the greatest masters of British watercolour landscape painting. He is commonly known as the painter of light, and his work is regarded as a romantic preface to Impressionism. Biography Early life Joseph Mallard William Turner was baptized on 14 May 1775, but his date of birth is unknown. It is generally believed he was born between late April and early May. Turner himself claimed he was born on 23 April, but there is no proof. He was born in Maiden Lane, Covent Garden, in London, England. His father, William Turner, was a barber and wig maker. His mother, Mary Marshall, came from a family of butchers. A younger sister, Mary Ann, was born in September 1778 but died in August 1783. In 1785, Due to his mother showing signs of the mental disturbance for which she was admitted first to St. Luke's Hospital for Lunatics in Old Street in 1799, and then Bethlehem Hospital in 1800, the young Turner was sent to stay with his maternal uncle, Joseph Mallard William Marshall, in Brentford, then a small town on the banks of the River Thames west of London. The earliest known artistic exercise by Turner is from this period, a series of simple colorings of engraved plates from Henry Boswell's picturesque view of the antiquities of England and Wales. Around 1786, Turner was sent to Margate on the northeast Kent coast. Here he produced a series of drawings of the town and surrounding area foreshadowing his later work. Turner returned to Margate many times in later life. By this time, Turner's drawings were being exhibited in his father's shop window and sold for a few shillings. His father boasted to the artist Thomas Stothard that, My son, sir, is going to be a painter. In 1789, Turner again stayed with his uncle who had retired to Sunning Well in Berkshire. A whole sketchbook of work from this time in Berkshire survives as well as a watercolour of Oxford. The use of pencil sketches on location, as the foundation for later finished paintings, formed the basis of Turner's essential working style for his whole career. Many early sketches by Turner were architectural studies in, or exercises in, perspective, and it is known that, as a young man, he worked for several architects including Thomas Hardwick, James Wyatt and Joseph Bonamy the Elder. By the end of 1789, he had also begun to study under the topographical draftsman Thomas Moulton whom Turner would later call my real master. He entered the Royal Academy of Art schools in 1789, when he was 14 years old, and was accepted into the Academy a year later. Sir Joshua Reynolds, president of the Royal Academy, chaired the panel that admitted him. At first Turner showed a keen interest in architecture, but was advised by the architect Thomas Hardwick to continue painting. His first watercolour painting a view of the Archbishop's Palace. Lambeth was accepted for the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition of 1790 when Turner was 15. As a probationer in the Academy, he was taught drawing from plaster casts of antique sculptures. From July 1790 to October 1793, his name appears in the registry of the Academy over a hundred times. In June 1792, he was admitted to the life class to learn to draw the human body from nude models. Turner exhibited watercolours each year at the Academy while painting in the winter and travelling in the summer widely throughout Britain, particularly to Wales, where he produced a wide range of sketches for working up into studies and watercolours. These particularly focused on architectural work, which utilised his skills as a draftsman. In 1793, he showed the watercolour titled The Rising Squall, Hot Wells from St. Vincent's Rock, Bristol, which foreshadowed his later climatic effects. Cunningham in his obituary of Turner wrote that it was 
recognized by the wiser few as a noble attempt at lifting landscape art out of the tame insipidities, and evinced for the first time that mastery of effect for which he is now justly celebrated in 1796. Turner exhibited Fisherman at Sea, his first oil painting at the Academy of a Nocturnal Moonlit Scene of the Needles off the Isle of Wight. The image of boats in peril contrasts the cold light of the moon with the firelight glow of the fisherman's lantern. Wilton said that the image is a summary of all that had been said about the sea by the artists of the 18th century, and shows strong influence by artists such as Horace, Vanette, Philip James de Lauderbourg, Peter Monamy, and Francis Swain, who was admired for his moonlight marine paintings. This particular painting cannot be said to show any influence of Willem van der Velde the Younger, as not a single nocturnal scene is known by that painter. Some later work, however, as shown below, was created to rival or complement the manner of the Dutch artist. The image was praised by contemporary critics and founded Turner's reputation, as both an oil painter and a painter of maritime scenes. Early career Turner travelled widely in Europe, starting with France and Switzerland in 1802 and studying in the Louvre in Paris in the same year. He made many visits to Venice. On a visit to Lyme Regis, in Dorset, he painted a stormy scene. Important support for his work came from Walter Ramsden Fawkes, of Farnley Hall, near Otley in Yorkshire, who became a close friend of the artist. Turner first visited Otley in 1797, aged 22, when commissioned to paint watercolours of the area. He was so attracted to Otley and the surrounding area that he returned to it throughout his career. The stormy backdrop of Hannibal crossing the Alps is reputed to have been inspired by a storm over the Chevron in Otley while he was staying at Farnley Hall. Turner was a frequent guest of George O'Brien Wyndham, 3rd Earl of Egremont, at Petworth House in West Sussex and painted scenes that Egremont Fund have taken from the grounds of the house and of the Sussex countryside including a view of the Chichester Canal. Petworth House still displays a number of paintings. Personal life as Turner grew older, he became more eccentric. He had few close friends except for his father, who lived with him for 30 years and worked as his studio assistant. His father's death in 1829 had a profound effect on him, and thereafter he was subject to bouts of depression. He never married but had a relationship with an older widow, Sarah Danby. He is believed to have been the father of her two daughters born in 1801 and 1811. Later he had a relationship with Sophia Caroline Booth after her second husband died, living for about 18 years as Mr. Booth in her house in Chelsea. Like many of the day, Turner was a habitual user of snuff. In 1838, the King of France, Louis Philippe, presented her gold snuff box to him. Of two other snuff boxes, an agate and silver example bears Turner's name of, and another, made of wood, was collected along with his spectacles, magnifying glass and card case by an associate housekeeper. Death Turner died in the house of his lover Sophia Caroline Booth in Cheney Walk in Chelsea on 19 December 1851, and is said to have uttered the last words, The Son is God. At his request he was buried in St. Paul's Cathedral, where he lies next to Sir Joshua Reynolds. His last exhibition at the Royal Academy was in 1850. Turner's friend, architect Philip Hardwick, son of his tutor, Thomas Hardwick, was in charge of making the funeral arrangements and wrote to those who knew Turner to tell them at the time of his death that, I must inform you, we have lost him. Other executors were his cousin and chief mourner at the funeral, Henry Harper IV, R.E.V.D., Henry Scott Trimmer, George Jones Ra and Charles Turner Ra. Art. Style Turner's talent was recognized early in his life. Financial independence allowed Turner to innovate freely. His mature work is characterized by a chromatic palette and broadly applied atmospheric washes of paint. According to David Piper's The Illustrated History of Art, his later pictures were called Fantastic Puzzles. Turner was recognized as an artistic genius. 
Influential English art critic John Ruskin described him as the artist who could most stirringly and truthfully measure the moods of nature. Suitable vehicles for Turner's imagination were found in shipwrecks, fires, natural catastrophes, and natural phenomena such as sunlight, storm, rain, and fog. He was fascinated by the violent power of the sea, as seen in Dawn after the wreck and the slave ship. Turner's major venture into printmaking was the Liber Studiorum, 70 prints that he worked on from 1806 to 1819. The Liber Studiorum was an expression of his intentions for landscape art. Loosely based on Claude Lorraine's Liber Veritatis, the plates were meant to be widely disseminated and categorize the genre into six types marine, mountainous, pastoral, historical, architectural, and elevated or epic pastoral. His printmaking was a major part of his output, and a museum is devoted to it, the Turner Museum in Sarasota, Florida. Founded in 1974 by Douglas Montrose Graham to house his collection of Turner prints, Turner placed human beings in many of his paintings to indicate his affection for humanity on the one hand, but its vulnerability and vulgarity amid the sublime nature of the world on the other. Sublime here means awe-inspiring, savage grandeur, a natural world unmastered by man, evidence of the power of God, a theme that romanticist artists and poets were exploring in this period. To Turner, light was the emanation of God's spirit and this was why he focused the subject matter of his later paintings by leaving out distractions such as solid objects and detail, concentrating on the play of light on water, the radiance of skies and fires. Although these late paintings appear to be impressionistic and therefore a forerunner of the French school, Turner was striving for expression of spirituality in the world rather than responding primarily to optical phenomena. His early works, such as Tintin Abbey, stayed true to the traditions of English landscape. However, in Hannibal Crossing the Alps, an emphasis on the destructive power of nature had already come into play. His distinctive style of painting, in which he used watercolor technique with oil paints, created lightness, fluency, and ephemeral atmospheric effects. In his later years he used oils even more transparently, and turned to an evocation of almost pure light by use of shimmering color. A prime example of his mature style can be seen in Rain, Steam and Speed, the Great Western Railway, where the objects are barely recognizable. The intensity of hue and interest in evanescent light not only placed Turner's work in the vanguard of English painting, but exerted an influence on art in France. The Impressionists, particularly Claude Monet, carefully studied his techniques. Turner used pigments like carmine in his paintings, knowing that they were not long-lasting. Despite the advice of contemporary experts to use more durable pigments, as a result, many of his colors have now faded greatly. John Ruskin complained at how quickly Turner's work decayed. Turner was indifferent to posterity and chose materials that looked good when freshly applied. By 1930 there was concern that both his oils and his watercolors were fading. High levels of volcanic ash in the atmosphere during 1816, the year without a summer, led to unusually spectacular sunsets during this period, and were an inspiration for some of Turner's work. John Ruskin says in his notes on Turner in March 1878 that an early patron, Dr. Thomas Munro, the principal physician of Bedlam, was a significant influence on Turner's style. His true master was Dr. Munro. To the practical teaching of that first patron and the wise simplicity of method of watercolor study, in which he was disciplined by him and companioned by Girton. The healthy and constant development of the greater power is primarily to be attributed the greatness of the power itself. It is impossible to overestimate. On a trip to Europe, circa 1820, he met the Irish physician Robert James Graves. 
Graves was traveling in a diligence in the Alps when a man who looked like the mate of a ship got in, sat beside him, and soon took from his pocket a notebook across which his hand from time to time passed with the rapidity of lightning. Graves wondered if the man was insane. He looked saw that the stranger had been noting the forms of clouds as they passed and that he was no common artist. The two travelled and sketched together for months. Graves tells that Turner would outline a scene, sit doing nothing for two or three days, then suddenly, perhaps on the third day, he would exclaim, there it eyes, and seizing his colours work rapidly till he had noted down the peculiar effect he wished to fix in his memory, the first American to buy a Turner. Painting was James Lennox of New York City, a private collector. Lennox wished to own a Turner and in 1845 bought one unseen through an intermediary, his friend C. R. Leslie. From among the paintings Turner had on hand and was willing to sell for £500, Leslie selected and shipped the 1832 atmospheric seascape staffer. Fingal's Cave, worried about the painting's reception by Lennox, who knew Turner's work only through etchings, Leslie wrote to Lennox that the quality of Staffer, a most poetic picture of a steamboat, would become apparent in time. On receiving the painting Lennox was baffled, and, greatly disappointed, by what he called the painting's indistinctness. When Leslie was forced to relay this opinion to Turner, Turner said, You should tell Mr. Lennox that indistinctness is my forte, Staffer. Fingal's Cave is now owned by the Yale Center for British Art. Legacy Turner left a small fortune which he hoped would be used to support what he called decayed artists. He planned and designed an almshouse for them at Twickenham with a gallery for some of his works. His will was contested and in 1856, after a court battle, his first cousins, including Thomas Price, Turner, received part of his fortune. Another portion went to the Royal Academy of Art, which occasionally awards students the Turner Medal. His collection of finished paintings was bequeathed to the British nation, and he intended that a special gallery would be built to house them. This did not happen because of a failure to agree on a site and the parsimony of British governments. Twenty-two years after his death, the British Parliament passed an act allowing his paintings to be lent to museums outside London, and so began the process of scattering the pictures which Turner had wanted to be kept together. In 1910, the main part of the Turner bequest, which includes unfinished paintings and drawings, was rehoused in the Duveen Turner Wing at the Tate Britain. In 1987, a new wing at the Tate, the Claw Gallery, was opened to house the Turner Bequest. Though some of the most important paintings remain in the National Gallery in contravention of Turner's condition that they be kept and shown, together, increasingly paintings are lent abroad, ignoring Turner's provision that they be kept, constantly, in Turner's Gallery. After the Turner content was diminished and diluted in the Claw Gallery from c. 2002, in 2010 to 12 only two of the nine rooms on the main floor were devoted to Turner. The claim that the Tate was fulfilling Turner's wishes was dropped in 1995, when the Charity Commission said that the Turner bequest had been free of Turner's conditions. This was challenged by Leland Price QC. Saint. Mary's Church, Battersea added a commemorative stained glass window for Turner, between 1976 and 1982. St. Paul's Cathedral, a Royal Academy of Arts in Victoria and Albert Museum all hold statues representing him. A portrait drawing by Cornelius Varley with his patent graphic telescope was compared with his death mask by Kelly Freeman at Dundee University. 2009 tend to ascertain whether it really depicts Turner. The city of Westminster unveiled a memorial plaque at the site of his birthplace at 21 Maiden Lane, Covent Garden, the 2nd of June 1999. Selby Whittingham founded the Turner Society at London and Manchester in 1975, after the Society endorsed the Tate Gallery's Claw Gallery Wing as the solution to the controversy of what should be done with the Turner bequest. Selby Whittingham resigned and founded the Independent Turner Society. 
The Tate created the prestigious annual Turner Prize Art Award in 1984, named in Turner's honor, and 20 years later the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolors founded the Windsor and Newton Turner Watercolor Award, a major exhibition, Turner's Britain, with material on loan from around the globe was held at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery from 7 November 2003 to 8 February 2004. In 2005, Turner's The Fighting Temeraire was voted Britain's greatest painting in a public poll organised by the BBC. In October 2005, Professor Harold V. Livermore, owner of Sandycom Lodge for 60 years, gave the villa at Twickenham which Turner designed and built for himself, to the Sandycom Lodge Trust to be preserved as a monument to the artist. In 2006, he also gave land to the trust which had been part of Turner's domain. The organization The Friends of Turner's House was formed in 2004 to support it. In April 2006, Christie's New York auction Judeca, La Donna della Salute and San Giorgio, a view of Venice exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1841 for $35.8 million, setting a new record for a Turner work. The New York Times stated that according to two sources who requested anonymity the buyer was casino magnate Stephen Wynne. In 2006, the Kimville Art Museum returned Turner's Glaucus and Scylla to the heirs of John and Anna Jaffe after they made a Holocaust claim. The Kimball repurchased the painting for $5.7 million at a sale by Christie's in April 2007. Between 1 October 2007 and 21 September 2008, the first major exhibition of Turner's work in the United States in more than 40 years came to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the National Gallery of Art in Washington, and the Dallas Museum of Art. It included over 140 paintings, more than half of which were from the Tate. In 2011, Margate opened the Turner Contemporary Gallery to celebrate the association of the artist with the town. On 7 July 2010, the J. Paul Getty Museum purchased Turner's final painting of Rome completed in 1839, Modern Rome, Campo Vaccino, at a Sotheby's auction in London for $44.9 million.